Now, fewer than seven legal challenges have been launched today against HS2, the high-speed rail link planned to run between London and Birmingham. Various groups are trying to block the £34 billion project. Their objections include the route itself, the blight that will cause the properties along the route and the levels of compensation on offer. HS2 was given the go-ahead by the government in January. It's scheduled to start carrying passengers in 2026. The challenges at the High Court are seeking, seeking judicial reviews which could delay construction. Well, while the High Court considers those bids, the company that will build HS2 is proceeding as planned, confident that the government's go-ahead is legally sound. This is a project uh, that the country needs. The existing railway is becoming increasingly full, and by the middle of the next decade, uh, parts of it will be effectively full. So we need to start now to plan to have that capacity in place. Well, with me now is Councillor Paul Braithwaite from Camden Council, one of the local authorities which are challenging HS2. Thank you very much for, for joining me. Now, you heard Ms Munro speaking there. What are your objections? Well, I'm a Camden councillor and I have to say the effect on our borough is going to be dis absolutely disastrous. Um, we're talking about 300 homes in uh, council homes by the side of Euston, increasing the size of Euston and a devastating effect on Camden's economy in linking the potential high speed two to high speed one, which will completely blight the economy of Camden. Well, let's uh, start first with those 300 homes. Yes. When you think about the thousands Thousands that will actually use the, the rail link once it's built. Surely it's a small price to pay, and these 300 homes, the people who live in it, won't be left homeless, will they? But it's completely unnecessary to take those homes out. You can double deck the station, as Grand Central is in New York. The hub at Old Oak Common is really much more important in getting people into the city and into London. Euston is already full. Anybody who travels through on the underground knows it. And it, it's a terrible effect on Euston if we bring it into Euston. But it's going to be expanding Euston. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a railway station which is quite heavily used by passengers who want to travel up the, north. The footprint does not need to be increased at all. You could keep the community, you could keep the Bangladeshi community in Drummond Street. You don't need to devastate the area right across Camden Town by replacing nine bridges. But you see, the thing is, is that we can use this, let's use the Crossrail, Crossrail as an example. That's been going since 2009, scheduled to finish in, uh, in 2018. A lot of London was up, uh, went through upheaval as a result of that, but it's, it's beginning to regenerate itself, it's moving on and it's adapted. But so surely that's what will happen with HS2 as well. You have to be sensitive to the existing communities and Alison Munro and High Speed 2 staff have their hands over their ears. There's no actual engagements. This is just a faux process going on. But we have on. to have the infrastructure, surely. Do you but, not agree? Uh, yes, and Crossrail is a wonderful thing, and the Mayor is completely right that we need Crossrail too, and it should go through Euston and King's Cross. All I'm suggesting is that High-speed rail should run the spine of the country from um, Heathrow and should come into Old Oak Common. But there's no actual need for it to come into Euston or indeed High-speed 2 themselves have reported that there is not enough demand to run trains through to Eurostar. So what then, um, if the court rejects this argument, what will be your next step? The, the arguments in court over the next 10 days are as to process. 1,100 responses were lost and not considered. So I think there's a very good chance that the judiciary come January will say, actually, you've got to run the process again. That will give at least the opportunity to delay the legal bill and knock it into the next parliament, where we're likely to see the Howard Davis review coming back and saying, we have to do something strategic on airports. And it may not involve Euston. OK, well, Paul Braithwaite, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Charlie.